Welcome to what should be an evening of excitement as March Madness continues here on CBS here in Worcester, Massachusetts as the number 14 seed Rams of Fordham gets set to take on the third seed in this region, the Minutemen of Massachusetts. Earlier this afternoon, Kentucky and Iowa State both advanced. They'll meet in second round play on Sunday. Later on tonight, it'll be Syracuse taking on Princeton. Good evening, everyone. I'm James Brown. Well, as Jim Nance mentioned back in the studio, these two teams are breaking the longest drought of NCAA tournament appearances of the 64 team field. In the case of Fordham, it's been 21 years since they've been here. In the case of Massachusetts, try three decades. My partner is Bill Raftery. And Bill, in the case of the Minutemen, they're coming out in a big way. As a matter of fact, they're rated third in this region. And when that was announced, that did raise a few eyebrows. A lot of people argued over it, but John Calipari, a new star mm -hmm. on the horizon. People calling him to look into their positions. But what they have is Will Herndon. John Calipari feeds off of him. Their defensive pressure, the other four read him. Whatever he happens to do, they will react, whether it's the trap or playing the passing lane. All right, Fordham out of New York City has been laboring, I guess, if you will, in the shadows of Big East Power, Syracuse, and Seton Hall. But they've been knocking at the door the past few years, and finally, the NCAA door is open for them. It's not that they've been basking in anonymity. Lionel Simmons kept them out, and then, of course, they had the play-in game. But this is a club that has to get good scoring. Jean Prelou has to ring the bell for this club. He's a good outside shooter, but he's been up and down during the course of the season. If he can ring the bell, all of a sudden, it opens up their inside game. And Maybe he'll be smiling at the end of the game. <laughs> if he wants anything to be infectious, he ought to come over here and talk with you. The starting lineups for tonight's contest, Billy, really ought to be a nice matchup at center between Sanford Jenkins and Harper Williams. Well, Sanford's very active and aggressive, and Harper Williams truly one of the premier six foot seven centers in the land. A leaper supreme indeed. The referees for tonight's contest, Norm Baruki out of South Laguna, California, Gary Markham, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and Mike Tanko, Dallas, Texas. I've already mentioned 21 years since the last appearance, and Billy, you mentioned that they have been close a number of times for them. Well, they played uh, Lionel Simmons a couple of times, then they got their playing game, and you know, think back to Digger Phelps in the early 70s when they got that great run. Massachusetts 1962 was their last year in the tournament. They're hoping to make the most of it here. And of course, a partisan crowd of just about 14,000 on hand. And these fans have been rocking and rolling all afternoon. And that's right, they didn't get in when Julius Irving was a student. John Calipari, certainly one of the bright up and coming young coaches in America, fourth season here at UMass. His squad is riding the crest of a 12 game win streak. They were the Atlantic 10 regular season and tournament champions. Nick McCarchuk, fifth year at Fordham, 15th year overall in coaching. Fordham has won 12 of its last 14 games. Set to jump center. Will Herndon for UMass. And Sanford Jenkins of Fordham. And we're underway as UMass controls the tip. This is Anton Brown handling the ball. Fordham man to man, you'll see a lot of zone. I think Herndon got up big enough at six foot three for that center jump. He can fly. And let fly with a jumper. Harper Williams back out to Anton Brown. And Jenkins with the rebound for Fordham. So Fordham is on the board first as Fred Herzog, the team's leading scorer at 17 a game, gives the Rams a two-zip lead. And back into the zone. One trip, enough for Nick McCarchuk. His concern, offensive rebounding, and it should be the way you, you mass attack first with Barbie on the last set. Anton Brown, pump fake. And Brown answers right back, averaging 10 on the season. Four 1,000-point career scores on the floor for UMass, three for Fordham. This may be the only game in America with seven guys on the floor, 1,000 career points. And only one ball, JP. That's the guy right there. Prelo on fire. 
Fordham's got a legit shot. Sean Prelo. And a foul call on Sanford Dinkins. And Bill, you know this team pretty well. And they certainly are trying to answer whatever charge. They being, of course, the Rams of Fordham, as you take a look at Nick McCarchuk. You've known him for a while. Well, I knew Nick at Providence when he sat next to Dave Gavitt in the Final Four in St. Louis. Of course, later, great high school coach, assistant, and then later at Canisius. And now at Fordham, got the Rams parking. Deep jumper off the mark. McGowan can't control it. It'll go back to UMass. Two-three match. You'll see shots open in the middle here. Ground. Nash will penetrate against that zone and also kick to the open corner. Dewey Stenson handling the ball for Fordham. They'll run a triangle, high-low, try and post up and dump down. Fordham showing patience on the offensive end. This is Joe McGowan. It's McGowan, three low. Dewey Stenson, Sanford Jenkins. And Fred Herzog, the five for Fordham. Herzog's interesting, Jeb. He can play in or out, shoot the threes. And they got the nickel dimer, a couple of them early. The refs checking the pee and the whistle on Anton Brown. They're doing what, Billy, with the whistle? <laughs> checking to see if there's air. And that little ball floats. A lot of nights you hear it early. Mass, a club very tough, JB. We went over and watched that workout. And they're competitive. They go after every shot, challenge on rebounds. Tenacious on the glass as well. And a foul whistle. Maybe Harper Williams. Will Herndon, one of the five second call, pleading with the official to no avail. Lou Rowe into the lineup for UMass. To take a look at some of the scores from earlier. Oklahoma State, a big winner there. Eddie Sutton showing he can still coach. And of course, Michigan State sets up a battle with Cincinnati. They play one other early in the year. Since he had a big lead and lost it, now they've got another one. Lewis Rowe being overplay, uh, overplaying Herzog. And they're big guys. A little contact doesn't hurt. A little bit of a contrast from the earlier game, game two here at the Centrum. Iowa State, UNC Charlotte. The officials certainly let that one go a little bit better. Pretty tight here in the early going. Tough pass. And the follow over the back. That'll be whistle against Sanford Jenkins. And that is foul number two on Jenkins. Can't play without him. You've got to change things a little. Don't have that aggressive play. Sherwin content. Comes in now. Kid out of Christ the King. Great high school program, and that hurts. Content replacing Sanford Jenkins, who takes a seat on the bench. Jenkins averaging 11 points a game on the season. Content three. So a little loss right there in productivity, at least on paper. Herndon very active, and the ability to come outside and shoot by their big guys is struggling. Off the mark that time. Now they were telling me when Stevenson has the ball, they all pay attention because they're not sure what he's going to do with it. Jay Fazan usually comes in and runs the point, and they slide Stinson. Nashville <laughs> switching to man-to-man. Free low. Nice drive. Can't get the drop. The rebound by Herndon. Herndon had been poked in the eye, but he seems to be okay. McCoy, great score. McCoy off the glass. You mentioned a great score, the all-time leading score in UMass history. Banks it off the glass, and we're all tied at four. A little bit of steps, traveling violation. I mentioned McCoy being a scorer, JB. He uses the kiss beautifully here, but he does need a lot of shots. Not a pure shooter, but has that innate ability to ring the bell. Harper Williams into the UMass lineup. Jay Fazan for Fordham. 
Harper Williams down on the box. He's a threat because he can score in or pop out for the deep one. Pretty good three-point shooter for six foot seven. Here's where he stopped his line. Inside, indeed. Harper Williams with a little jump hook. He's a 14-point per game score, and it's a 6-4 Massachusetts lead. JB, you could score in that three-second lane if you don't get in front of the guy. I used to be able to get up that high. <laughs> I don't mean to stretch things over. So beautiful oh, high low. Intended to be a pass, mm -hmm. should have been a shot. Intended receiver was Fred Herzog. Oh, there's a better job fronting. Double tech. Six four ball game, 15 21 left in the first half. Time out on the floor. For, you know, we've already talked about how this is the first time the NCAA tournament has come into the state of Massachusetts. And who cares if this is Worcester and not Boston? After all, Bruce Springsteen began his first tour, to his last tour in this building in Worcester. The birth control pill was invented in Worcester. Barbed wire was invented in Worcester. And just down the road, the game of basketball was invented in Springfield, Massachusetts by Dr. James Naismith. Or was it? A lot of people think the game was invented in Worcester by a Worcester native. His name was Bob Cousy. Well, I'll tell you, they're gonna think the slam dunk was invented in Mass as well. Will Herndon with a mean follow-up slam dunk and it's an 8-6 mass lead. And fortunately, there wasn't any barbed wire around that rib, JB. I'm big. Content, blocked from behind by Rowe. And the Minutemen on the run. This is their game. Strong. Be aggressive, that's their nature. Lou Rowe at 6-7, running the floor well with the block at one end, the layup at the other end. Jumper is off the mark by Herzog. One and done, unfortunately, for Fordham. Got to get good ones with patience and convert. Anton Brown at the point. Back to man-to-man, -man. Fordham. Patience on the offensive end. Rowe with the jump. And Lou Rowe helping Mass to a 10-2 run and a 12-6 lead. Typical of Atlantic City guys, a nice touch. Reload, in and out, content with the basket and the foul. Is that a help for the Rams? Anything off the glass with these terrific competitors of Mass is a plus for Nick McCarchick. This one, soft enough, almost gets the roll, but good inside position by Sharon. And he is not only content, but delighted with that, and just incredible. He at six foot three, reminiscent of guys in my, Cleo Hill comes to mind in the late 50s. Great player, played with the Hawks for a while. He could sky. Yeah. That foul was on Lou Rowe, his second personal foul. Fourth team foul for UMass. 12-9 ball game. Fordham doing well to stay close. Good hands by Frulo. And he finally comes away with the steal. Quick hands. Nice catch. And Herzog, foul. A good job on the part of Herzog just to catch that one in traffic. Uh, Barbie is another one of their A players. Pretty good running of the floor as Herzog in traffic, but pursuit of the ball 
Now McCoy, offensive minded, really looking to catch and be a threat instead of gathering and looking for others. Need to catch first. Steal by UMass. Earned it. Pass ahead. Nice slam by McCoy. Give the credit, though, to Will Herndon. Good effort to collect the ball and a nice bounce pass, the right pass. Those Pittsburgh guys have the connection, including Calipari. Minutemen, six of seven field goals, six of the last seven field goals. And it's a 14-9 lead. Fizan, the playmaker, the guy who finds others. Buckner, not a bad jump shooter. So they've got a little more offensive ability on the floor. Pick and roll play attempted by Herzog. Content, boy, Content has come off the bench and provided a nice spark as he scores and is fouled. Five points thus far by Sherwin Content. Earlier we talked about the guy that they all read and play off, Herndon, the heart and soul of this club from what I've seen in tape and in practice. McCoy may be the foundation. Low post, lackadaisical, huh? letting the ball come in there, relying on that skying ability. Touch foul committed that time by Herndon. First personal for Herndon. Sixth team foul for UMass. The Rams hanging in, trailing by just two with 12 minutes left in the first half of play. Switching to D, James. Little man, little two, three, trying to match and identify. Barb with the jump E. Best, oh, JB, best all around player on this club, according to the coaches. Nice cut. Boy, no uncontested shots Nothing. under the hoop. They, they remind me a lot of Georgetown and their aggressiveness. Barb back again. He's in a groove. And Billy, when a guy is warm like that, you continue to go Get to it him. to him, because he took that one on his own with the nice step through. Minutemen out in front, 18-12, 11-12, left in the first half of play. <laughs> Got to bail him out, nice play. They really close out on the ball. Everybody else looks to help on this. Bad shot. <laughs> Good rebound. Minutemen continuing to crash the boards. As you said, one and out. <laughs> Mike Williams couldn't find the range. A little strong, I might add. But with that miss, UMass eight of its last 10 field goals. Seem a little in a hurry, but I think it's mass pressure that's making Fordham out of sync. Not a real tall squad, UMass, on the inside, but strong bodies, and they're pushing the Fordham Rams out front. That says he can make that. And that was a three-point shot by Dave Buckner. I think they have to slow Mass down with their defense, JB. They've got to make them make the extra pass. Let them pry a little bit. They're an excitement team. They feed off of big plays. McCoy. Williams, Barbie, Herndon, and Williams, the five in white on the floor for UMass. Mike's the penetrator outside. Williams, that is. But it closes on Harper. Williams can drill the long one. Under 10 on the shot clock. This is a great help to Fordham. Gives him a blow. A three-point shot off the mark. Rebound. Williams averaging only four points a game, his first bucket. Fordham can't afford those second opportunities. <laughs> Double clutch move off the mark by Herzog. And again, UMass limiting the Rams to just one shot. Barbie for three. Buckner with the rebound. It's Jay Fazan, Dave Buckner, Sherwin Content, Jean Prelo, and Fred Herzog, the five in dark. 
for Fordham. Kazan gives them a sense of order. Good playmaker, 12 assists versus Lehigh, five versus Bucknell. And a reach around foul, the worst kind of foul by Mike Williams. First personal for Williams. And 17 foul for UMass. And it'll be a one and one situation when we come back after this timeout. A 2015 lead by the Minutemen. And the officials just blew the time off, timeout off, Billy, and to waved them the, back out. To shoot the one and one. Well, the teams are certainly heading to the bench. <laughs> and Nick, uh, Nick, not used to maybe the lights and the TV timeouts. Because. John Calabari on a few times this year nationally. How about their arena, the Curry Hicks Cage? Now, I thought we played in an old gym. That made Walsh Auditorium on Seton Hall's campus look like Madison Square Garden, huh? Well, what do you think it made the old indoor athletic building look like up on the fourth floor? <laughs> Jay Fazan off the mark with the free throw. Anton Brown with the ball for UMass. And the change up again, a little man to man. Throw a little confusion. Good hands by Fazan, but recovered. Row scores. Assist, Harper Williams. UMass, nice job of getting back on defense. 22 15 lead, a seven point lead for UMass. Buckner for three. Is that great to see? He struggled during the year, started to play a little bit better, and he needs some outside shooting. It's up to Mass to tag him now. Two three-pointers for Buckner. He's got six. Earned a nice pass to Williams. Oh, shit. This and is Williams, no, he blew an easy uh, uh, Excellent interior passing team. Big guys have nice eye-hand coordination. Fazan. Threw it to the rim. Well, now we have a timeout. I'm out on the floor. It's one of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. In Europe, in Japan, in America, Quaker State quality has passed the most demanding tests on UMass on top, 22-18, 7.26 remaining in the first half of play. And back to live action. And the 1-1-3, James, and, and what they've done for them is made Mass think a little bit, confuse them. You can't throw fastballs at this club. They like that up-tempo. And he can certainly drill it. Jerome Malloy, one of their pure shooters. Malloy with the basket. And it's a 24-18 lead by UMass. Swipe. Here's Anton Brown. <laughs> the, the, the easy two. The, the crowd thought the slam man. dunk was coming. Well, they were waiting for him to give it to Herndon, <laughs> and uh, we may have had a little postponement. It would have torn it off. Anton says, I've been working hard out here. Let me take this one. UMass coming up with the loose balls. And the Rams do a good job of getting back on defense this time. Now they can't get in that wide open, wide throttle type of basketball game. They've got to balance. Uh, we may have an accident here. Herndon's pants sliding down. Herndon does have a rather big pair of shorts on. 
And they're finding, it's finding their way down around his knees. Well, now. fortunately, he's got knobby <laughs> knees, or uh, Look we, we'd be calling the police. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a set of uh, Rick Mahorn grocery bags to hold him up. Buckner couldn't find the range on that three-point attempt. His string is hollering, please. <laughs> what is the deal with guys wearing these big baggy shorts? I thought they liked to look nice. And uh, this should have been a jump ball. Maybe Buckner pushed him into the jump ball situation. I don't have the answer for it. It's a new trend. I think a guy with the initials MJ may have started it. <laughs> Buckner picks up his first personal foul. Second for Fordham. The women's final four in two weeks on And while we have a moment, let's uh, take you around the country in the other action. Temple and Michigan are playing in Atlanta. 4-13 to go in the half. And Michigan leads it, Billy, by seven. Michigan in the white uniforms. Jim, the last time we saw these freshmen was uh, before their Indiana game. They said they couldn't wait to get to the NCAA tournament, knowing they were already going to be in the tournament. But it looks like the freshmen are off to a good start. Rose and Weber already having outstanding uh, first halves. Okay, Howard and Kansas, a one versus 16 matchup, and Kansas the first five. We just saw Alonzo Jamison score for the Jayhawks. Kansas team that most people feel sit right behind Duke University as a solid number two team in the United States. Excellent defensive club, can score, can play slow defensive, uh, a slow tempo game if they have to. It's a very versatile club. Could get all the way back to the Final Four again. And they're on the opposite side of the bracket from Duke, so looking way down the road, uh, it's possible we could have a Kansas-Duke repeat final in Minneapolis. So Kansas, it's first action of the 92 tournament, and right now let's send you back to Fordham and UMass, and Billy, give us a comment first about the Minutemen. Well, Massachusetts comes in playing extremely good basketball, won their conference tournament on their home court, beating West Virginia in a game that they just pounded them early, so I would expect them to come in with a lot of momentum. Should be favored in this game. Beat the same team last year in the NIT tournament. Okay, we'll have uh, more action and updates for you at halftime, but right now let's send you back to James Brown and Bill Raftery. All right, Jimmy and Billy, as a matter of fact, Packer is absolutely correct. This game is exactly one year to the day of the last matchup in postseason play. As a matter of fact, the NIT, where UMass beat Fordham by four in second round play. And while you were away, Sanford Jenkins picked up his third personal foul and is on the bench. Well, they need some feisty play on the glass, and Herzog, one of the guys now with Jenkins out of the game that has to pursue it, but you can see, JB, you don't get anything easy against UMass. Fordham, one field goal in the last five minutes can't buy a basket, and with Sanford Jenkins, their center on the bench with three personal fouls, Nick McCarchuk has got a task ahead of him now. Fordham trailing 28-18. Well, when you're looking for everything to go perfectly, that's a problem. They don't have the flexibility, particularly up front. Calipari signaling his troops to bring it back out and set it up inside to Williams. And Williams jump hook. Nice jump hook by Harper Williams. His fourth point of the game, averaging 14 on the season. And UMass out in front by 12. A dangerous time of the game right now for Fordham. They need a low post or preload deep. McGowan being handled and hounded, that is, by Barbie on defense. Herzog. And Herzog gets a good shot from down in the blocks. It'll be tough for them to play man to man. Back in the 1 1 3, I think that's what they're going to have to stay with for the rest of the half. Under four to play in the first half. UMass by 10. with the 
the skip pass to Barbie. Slapped away. Good hands by Prelo. Fazan to McGowan. And McGowan is fouled by Herndon. Will Herndon picks up his second personal foul. Eighth team foul for UMass. One and one situation. Well, the higher seeds have won 18 of 24 thus far. Southwest Louisiana upended number four Oklahoma. Tulane knocked off St. John's, winning its first ever tournament game. Major problem with Sanford Jenkins resting. A difficulty in the sense they don't have that explosive guy down on the blocks to complement Herzog. But they do have to take the opportunity breaks, but McGowan, unfortunately, can't help this trip. Only left with one free throw. McGowan actually thrown into the starting lineup out of desperation by Coach McCarchuk after the team started three and eight. And he brought just a lot of spunk and spark to the team. They'll need it as they trail by nine. It's 30, Fordham 21, but everybody's looking ahead, of course, to tonight's Princeton-Syracuse game. I have Pete Carroll, the coach at Princeton. Coach, you've had three strikes and out in this tournament. This is the fourth first-round try. What's up tonight? Well, I'm hoping we can do exactly what we've done in the past three tries, with the exception of changing the outcome. Th th thanks, Coach. Good, good, good luck to you. Back to you, BJ. All right, Curry. As UMass continues to battle on the boards. And the foul call that time on Jean Prelo. First personal on Prelo. That is a 15 foul called on for him. 324 left in the first half of play. UMass on top, 30-21. Now, JB, we know Pete is a personal, fun-loving guy, but uh, some people might say his comments and style there were much like his offense. Ooh. <laughs> I tell you, he has caused more headaches around the country. That he has. Not too many people calling Princeton for a game. Mm -mm. A masterful coach indeed. And Jimmy Beheim knows that he'll have his hands full with the Tigers coming up next after this contest here. As a foul is whistled underneath, called on Jim McCoy. And that's McCoy's first personal foul. As mentioned, many yeah, of you see Preston Syracuse, UCLA doing well. Yeah, there's a club. I mean, they've got explosive scoring. They run the floor well. They guard. Uh, they're going to be an interesting club as the tournament progresses. Now, you mentioned McGowan going into the lineup. It was after the Bucknell game. Nick McCarchick said, I'm, you seniors, it's your year. I'm going to start the seniors. You guys go play. And they just turned it around. And Coach McCarchick has stayed with it. Prelo off the front of the rim. Herndon with the rebound. You know, we may have to get Herndon a belt for those, those uh, shorts of his at halftime. Either that or we have the paddy wagon outside. <laughs> man to man. McCoy. UMass with the long rebound. Anton Brown off the glass and good. They run him down, don't they? And then they come right back. And the kiss nails it. <laughs> Calipari's got an aggressive club. They got the back screen. Prelo, unfortunately for Fordham, but nobody able to grab it. And I mentioned earlier, reminiscent of Georgetown style to me in their quickness to the basketball. That time McCoy came up with it. Hernan takes a seat on the bench. That last foul called on Jean Prelo. Second personal on him. 
sixth team foul on Fordham. Each trip, important to recognize for Mass with the switching man to zone. McCoy, Anton Brown with the ball, Tony Barbie, Harper Williams, and Kennard Robinson, the five on the four for UMass. And McCarchuk almost <laughs> trying to catch three players at once. Coming up at, at the half, it'll be Billy Packer, Jim Nance, and our New York studio. They are bringing you up to date on what's taking place around the country in the NCAA tournament. That'll be coming your way in just a few moments. Nance and Packer with at the half. A spiffy. Billy Packer. You know, that's as clean as I have ever seen <laughs> Billy Packer. Jimmy Nance, always, always. so sharp. Well, he's got to keep up. A standard has been set. Packer is changing on us. Herzog's got to touch it, JB. I think he's the guy that can light it up. A little low post action as Pope pulls off down low on Kennard Robinson, who tags him. Sean Hope will take a trip to the free throw line. A 6'8 freshman forward out of Graham, North Carolina, as you take a look at John Calipari. Many people compare him favorably to Rick Pitino. And he was, uh, a couple of people called him Rick. He looked like him. They thought he was him <laughs> during these few days here, but the renaissance undertaken at Mass has been successful by Calipari. I was about to mention there are similarities indeed. Renaissance being one. The look, the style, and one of his assistants, Bill Baino, his associate head coach, was at Seton Hall and saw that program resurrected. Sean Hope, a strong inside player, and no need to state the obvious there in terms of that big body. A little too strong on the shot there, one of two. 33-22 with 1.30 left to play in the first half of play. Minute men on top. Elevate with the best of them. Will the thrill. And that's the reason they call him that. Six three. He's smaller than me. The one thing that Calipari said about Will Herndon in describing him to me, he said, he jumps out of the gym, J.B. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> well, if you didn't believe, you will after that one. Herzog. an interesting player, JB, on the box who moves out to make threes as well. Shot clock is off, under 20. Got to pay attention to the shooters and Brown's ability to penetrate and find people. Jump stop. And his pants are still on. I don't know which is easier. The jam or keeping the trousers up. UMass closes the half with a 19-9 run and lead it 37-24. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA basketball championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Jim Nance and Billy Packer up next. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the people at Nike who encourage you to just...
every Thirteen, thirty-seven, twenty-four. Fazan, pitch to Jenkins, and UMass with the loose ball. And that's been the way it's been in the first half. It starts this way the second half. Quickness to the basketball. Jenkins ahead to Prelo. Prelo for three. And a tempo slam dunk on the follow that time by Content, but it bounds out. If Herzog can't get it inside, he's going to have to move out, JB. No doubt about it. Harper Williams with those long Excellent. arms coming from behind defensively to slap it away. Couldn't put a body on him. Earned it. just can't get anything going offensively, Bill, and give the credit to UMass for bodying him up. Bodying and also being in good position. There's a play where should have been a slip pass real quick to Jenkins, but they're in position. Hurt. So long. Talk about a sense of where you are on the court. A backhanded lay-in <laughs> by Herndon, who slapped the ball loose defensively. A little screen there. Remember as a kid, they taught you court awareness by looking down on the floor? <laughs> he knows by looking up. <laughs> Here come the Minutemen. Brown, foul, and score. Jay Fazan will pick up the foul. Let's check in with Curry Kirkpatrick. This team excited this week when they, so they got here on the bus, all the way on the bus. They got here before they realized they left their manager at home. And there's certainly plenty so far. And we're obviously having some microphone difficulties with Curry Kirkpatrick. We'll get back to that report right now. Back on the floor, Anton Brown drops in the free throw as UMass threatening to just completely blow this one apart, leading 42-24. And Nick McCarthy wants to talk it over. It's not easy being a truck. I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. But through it all, Chevy Full Size has the best resale value in the business. Chevy Trucks. The trucks you can depend on. The trucks that last. Now it's easy to own a Chevy truck. software fast, then you need a real power source inside. A source that can generate the power your software needs. The affordable Intel 486. Power it up and run your software at light speed. Intel, the computer inside. Dear Dave, how could I have known it would be even better the second time? Of course I speak of Wendy's chicken cordon bleu sandwich. I
most of the performers, and as you mentioned, knowing a sense of where you are, he looks up, checks the lights, and reverses his body. And Anton Brown with another steal. And a hard foul, but actually a smart foul on the part of Fazan to keep UMass from upping what is already the biggest lead of the game, 18. Not much you can do when they step up this pressure. They can deny the basketball or play soft. They pressure you and close down on you. All of their performers have that nature of taking it to you. Anton Brown has quietly been very effective out there. Nine points, four assists, and four steals. Solid. The committee's got to feel pretty good about this seed. Of the little heat they did take. This is a powerful basketball team. The Atlantic 10 regular season and tournament champions. Minutemen of Massachusetts, third seeded in the East Region. And Williams with the rebound, as Content couldn't get the tap in. Really clearly a case of just far better athletes on UMass. And, and the, I, I just can't help but think of this aggressive nature. Everybody attacking, whether it's on this end or the defensive end, but also they're unselfish. They don't care who scores. Oh, to underscore that, eight pass. of the nine guys who went in for UMass in the first half score. Eight of nine. The Fordham trying to rush it up now. It's going to change their... I think they've got to be patient, get good looks at the basket. Herzog, he said he should come outside. Fell short that time. As Content, nice job of drawing the foul with a double clutch. Sherwin Content. Young man out of Christ the King High School, sophomore of four. He played with some good kids, Faulkner, and this is probably what he learned from Jamal. Get inside, pump and hang a little bit, but the speed of the shot now might cause some more problems for Ford. I think they have to relax, stay in their zone, and make sure they only give Mass one attempt at it. Content did not have to be a star in high school, but certainly will have to learn to deliver as a go-to guy here. Christ the King, uh, Carl Beckett at St. John's, Khalid Reeves in the tournament, Phelps in the tournament. Amazing. Anton Brown getting a well-deserved rest. Mike Williams in a lineup replacing him. Boy, Herndon bringing the ball up the court. He does everything. Whatever you need. What did you say he changed the lights the last time down? <laughs> <laughs> he just can count them. Stays up long enough. A Fordham steal. Herzog to Fazan. Oh, shot! Oh. And Lou Rowe with the rebound. Up to that man, Herndon. Traveling call. Jim McCoy losing his footing. Uh, Kalapari's background out in Kansas. Little taste of Larry Brown, then in Pittsburgh when that program got going. The later years with Paul Evans. Knows how to get it done and the type of kids he wants to coach. Took a bit and a piece from different guys that he worked under. The Atlantic 10 Conference, really a conference with some bright coaches mm -hmm. there. Mike Jarvis, who of course has some success at Boston University, now turning that program around down at George Washington oh. University. Was Michael known as a uh, young man's high school coach, too? Patrick. Patrick Ewing. Ewing. Robinson. Another good one. He's had a few good ones. So a league of good coaches. 42-27, UMass on top. 16-05 left in the game. Either and a foul a, called from out high. I think inside, high Harper uh, trying to walk off an injury. But in this zone, one of the difficulties is that John Calipari's guys are active on the glass. You can't put a body, you can't identify. And their foot speed enables them to get by a screen out moving towards them. Dave Buckner in the lineup for Fordham, replacing Prelo. Patience again displayed by UMass on the offensive end. Under 10 on the shot clock. Off the mark. And it goes over to Fordham. So Jerome Malloy tried to measure that shot to no avail. Time to get back slowly, no sense rushing, run their offense. Looking to post up Herzog. Content. Rush the shot. Fazan. And Fazan with the three. A 
big three, maybe an emotional boost. That's got them knocking at the door a little bit. And the problem is this end, I think. Had been down by 18. Now a 12-point lead by UMass, 15 minutes to play. Slow them down on the offensive end. I think that's essential for Fordham. Make them use some clock, take tough shots. Jenkins with the rebound of the Williams miss. Content. Oh, oh. Well, he's got some big feet, but um, that was a little too obvious. No, that was more of the A train at rush hour, huh? <laughs> and as you notice, the armbands and uh, Jay Fazana, Dave Buck, their roommates, after the Bucknell game, they went home to their room and Jay's mom called, and unfortunately, one of his friends had been killed in an accident. And they have call waiting, and Dave Buckner's mom was on the call waiting. He got on, and his mom had to tell him that his dad had passed away, and it had a terrible impact, obviously, on the team as well as Dave. And it's taken him a while to shake it. Dust the armbands to pay homage to the dad. Williams with the easy two. Tough way to keep playing, you know, for youngsters. People aren't aware of what they have to go through and what they have to handle. Real sense of togetherness on the team, obviously. And that foul is called on Jenkins, and Jenkins is just having one tough night as he picks up his fourth personal foul. That's a third team foul. Foul that is for Fordham. He has just not had a chance to go, and Nick needs him. Buckner, deep three off the mark. Nice hustle, but only one guy in red. And there's the offensive foul. Harper Williams, a gamble, and it worked. I tell you, a red badge of courage for Buckner Buck. <laughs> to take that charge with the guy coming at him full steam to take a look at Calipari. Oh, well, he mentioned the one red shirt and three whites with communication skills over there. And on the pass, you got to get control. He has that right to that area. He obtained it. What a, what a price to pay for a right. <laughs> He did brace himself. And they shrug away by Rowe. They're playing excellent post defense. Herzog not able to get the basketball, but keeps flashing. And that time, the discard. You were being very polite. You call that a shrug, huh? That third <laughs> personal foul on Rowe. Well, right here, you can see discarding. Uh, a lot of strength in being able to do that as well. A tough position to be given the basketball in. Brown. <laughs> Should be a violation, right? Over and back, it'll go to Fordham. Yeah, it's Massimino we've seen. Calipari in the sideline. It's almost like they like the fine dining for Italian guys. Roley's the guy that's gonna roll up the sleeve, get a little mess on the shirt, but <laughs> Petito and John always looking. Sharp, sartorial splendor. Everyone's talking about Calipari leaving because he's enjoying success. He says he's tired of hearing that conversation. Uh, Mike Francesa gets on him quite a bit when they have him on. Mike, who was shared the desk all day long with Pat O'Brien in the studio. Way off the mark, Jerome Malloy. Here comes Fazan and the Rams. When you think of Fordham, a lot of people say the Phelps era, Tommy Sullivan, P.J. Colissimo, a guy who counted the towels on that team, incidentally, to St. Norco. Great pass. Herzog on the money, and all of a sudden, they do have some hope. Very nice, Bill. <laughs> It's now a 10-point ball game with 12.31 left in the game. Well, the guy that jumps into my mind is Barbie takes it to the goal. Oh, oh, nice inside. Oh, well, I tell you, somebody comes to cover you, somebody's open. Nice pass by Barbie. Herzog answers right back. Tempo favoring Mass. But you got to like the fight oh, in the yeah. quarter. And Herzog with the presence of mind to look up. They've extended the zone a little. Foul line open and penetration. 
should occur on occasion. But the guy I think of with Fordham is Eddie Conlon. Great NBA player. He and Johnny Bach put this program in a national position. RB with his own rebound and scores. The foul on Sean Holt as Barbie with the NBA type move. As the coaches noted, Barbie, their premier all around player, he knew he had pulled the string. They do everything in a strong fashion, whether it's the follow or the high five. I don't think we could play with these guys. We'd have the sore shooting hand. I was about to say, what affect the range of our shots? Uh, enthusiasm, a little bit like Calipari. Tony Barbie, the junior forward out of Indianapolis, North Central High School. And he drops it in. So Barbie adds to the UMass lead, 49-36. I'm tired, Charlie. Come on. Fast break points by UMass. Fordham shooting under their season's percentage from the field. And Herzog has really had to work hard for his points, Billy. And the zone now, he may have to work harder, but he's getting a little blow. Won't be out there long, I'm sure. You and, I, right in. you and I were just asking the question during the commercial, the man handling the ball now, Julie Stinson, where has he been? Well, no the, points in the, in the game, and he averages eight on the season. Hasn't seen the minutes either. Fazan stepped up. Controlled the club, didn't make any mistakes. And there he is, Stinson. What the basket? I'd really like to understand where he was and why. Well, we know he was on the bench, but why? Fordham still hanging around, Bill, trailing by only 11 with 11.09 left in the game. See how mass if they stay in that zone, if it slows them down. I and mean, they like to go after people. Sean Hope did a nice job of blocking out Harper Williams, freeing up the rebound for a teammate. Stinson, pretty good D, not a bad rebounder. Goes to the goal a little bit now. Mass back, Miniman. A perimeter club right now. Not a terrific inside team with Herzog on the pines and Jenkins with the foul problems. And Hope is a liability out that high. I'm trying to get a pick from Other than Freelo. the pick. Four seconds left on the shot clock. Stenson shot off the mark. Herndon with the rebound. You know, Herndon doesn't have a real spot on the floor. He's just a player. Well, they, as we noted, they feed off him. He finds spots, whether it's offense or defense, and others react. But I love their unselfish nature. RB for three. 11 points for Tony Barbie. He averages 12, and it's a 52-38 lead by the Minutemen. And he's leading first-round fist thrusts from what I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Quickness to the ball again. Anton Brown is always there for the loose ball. Decides to take it himself, and why not? Anton Brown having himself an outstanding game. 11 points, four steals, as we mentioned. How about his high school, A.C. Flora? The X-Man, Xavier, McDaniel. A pretty Ty fair ball Ty player. Tyrone Corbin. Pretty low. Not getting easy shots, always a hand contesting. 
you know, Harper Williams, number 31 in white, has a strong lower half as he moves guys out of the way and gets to the loose ball. That time, Sean Holt flattened it and will pick up the foul. Well, they're matching with aggression now, Fordham. Not laying back, going after people. Second personal foul on Sean Hope, and coming next, most of you will see Princeton taking on Syracuse. And I tell you, Jimmy Beheim, I've been mentioning before, really very, very intense as he prepares for Princeton. Uh, everybody I talk to throughout the country can't wait to see this game. We both know from watching Princeton over the years how they test your patience. Uh, Jimmy Beheim, he may be whining early in that one, but they do have some perimeter people who can test Pete Carell. Unwinding for Massachusetts, Jim McCoy with the bomb, and it's a 56-38 lead as Nick McCarchuk trying to find something in his coaching bag calls a timeout. The women's final four in two weeks on CBS. Centrum in Worcester, Massachusetts. The evening activities of this first round action in the East Region. The number three seed, Massachusetts, showing why they have been selected as a three seed. Power, giving it up to one another. Excellent defensively, a lot of help side. Challenge the ball, and everybody else looking to help. They don't. They want to finish last in steals, was the quote Calipari said in their league. If you give us the ball, fine. We're not going to gamble and give you easy shots. Jenkins rebounded by Herndon as he slams Stinson. Seven rebounds for Herndon. And Anton Brown loses the handle on the ball, but it's bounced off of a Fordham player. Kentucky and Iowa State, both winners in afternoon games here. Massachusetts and Fordham, you see the play right now. But coming next, Princeton looking to get a first round victory for the first time in four years, taking on the Big East tournament champion, Syracuse. There's that inside passing. Hide on the baseline, roll the post, find them. Biggest lead of the ball game, 20 points by the Minutemen. 7.38 left in the game. Jenkins and Jenkins scores over Tony Baldi. First basket of the game for Jenkins, and Jenkins averages 11. Well, the same thing for Nick McCarchick, he has in hand him to go to. It's inhibited their offensive thrust. And the reason he hasn't had Jenkins to go to, saddled with personal fouls three in the first half, he's got four right now. There's the gamble that Underneath eight, going for the pressure, turns it into some open floor opportunities. Brown can get the drop. Jenkins with the rebound. Herzog working hard down low, and the long arms of Williams. Williams reminds me so much of like a Clifford Ray, those long arms. Good example, good comparison. Uh, Nick McCarchick looked like Ray himself down here with the official <laughs> wanting that foul on that shot. Nice double up by Fazan. Pretty heady player, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's had his hands full all night. Nice steal, uh, and that would have been backcourt. Back court. Uh, I think we would have had that one right uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's late in the year. You think you got an easy shot down low, and Harper or others this time Williams takes care of business alone. Clean. And Williams barely goes up past his tiptoe. And he just goes up at the right time, JB. Not early. Waits till the other gets off the toes. Oh, shot. Williams. You know, Billy, he's listed at 6'7", but with those arms, he plays like he's 6'9", 6'10". And that's why he's such a good post defender. Look at the help. Darby. Oh. I tell you, what a frustrating evening for Herzog. Yet he is not giving up. He has been working awfully hard, but the UMass defense has been swarming. That denial 
the gamble high, knowing your partner. This time, Barbie down to oh, assist. Yo, yo. Oh. Okay, JB and Bill Rathery, UMass looking strong, but right now the hottest action is taking place in Atlanta, Temple, and Michigan. Two point game with six and a half to go. Here's Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner. And welcome those of you just joining us here at the Omni in Atlanta. Temple leading Michigan 59 57 with less than six and a half minutes to play and a traveling violation called against Michigan, which has shown a tendency as this game has worn on to make more and more mistakes, Quinn. Well, that's exactly the case with McKee and Jones both playing well offensively. That's one of the things that have helped Temple. The other part of it is as shots have started not to fall for Michigan, they press a little bit harder to try to get them in, and there's a patience factor that goes with experience that Michigan is starting not to exhibit obviously because they just don't have that kind of experience and that's the kind of thing that Temple has been able to do stay patient they've gotten some good play from their star player Michigan has turned the ball over six times here in the second half Temple just twice Temple is one of the trademarks of Temple is they value the ball John Cheney is a person that will get on his players for a many things but one particularly is a turnover got 10 seconds on the shot clock. Brunson to Strickland. Brunson is there, had it rejected. Strickland. And Rose has the loose ball for Michigan. Got three shots at it, Brunson has got it. Probably should have brought that one back out. That's a freshman for Temple that made the mistake. Instead of kicking the ball out to somebody open, he tried to take it in. Howard. Tie game at 59. And, and that's what Michigan has missed. When Howard got his fourth foul, they also lost that inside-outside or high-low combination because Howard picked up that fourth foul, and there was nobody to, to keep him involved. And obviously, in the game, sitting on the bench, nobody else can pick up the slack the way Howard can. Brunson takes a seat on the Temple bench. Temple now with McKee, Kilgore, Strickland, Eddie Jones, Vic Karstarfin. Kilgore. <laughs> and Michigan's Ray Jackson with the rebound. King. Rose for three. Oh, and he knew it right away, too, Greg. He shot it and started backing up. Michigan back in the lead, 62-59. Jalen Rose has 15. And we have 4.40 to play in the game. Temple is going to be patient. They're going to make Michigan play defense for at least 30 seconds on the 45-second clock. Eddie Jones, top of the key, three-pointer too long. And oh. coming back is Kilgore, out of bounds to Michigan. Michigan. That's a tough shot to try to get up there, and John Chaney's trying to say that was a foul, but I think Kilgore probably took an ill-advised shot. Good effort to try to get it back. He just didn't. Three years ago, when Steve Fisher took over this Michigan team, Michigan played in the Southeast Regional here in Atlanta, then moved on to Lexington, just as the winner from here will do. And of course, Michigan went on to win it all back then. Tap up and out of bounds, and Temple gets the basketball. Yeah, but we've got uh, Eddie Jones down on the ground. He was inside in there, and they got... got
Temple. Up six with a minute ten to go here. You saw the Massachusetts 